hello everyone in the last video we have created our php files and we have created a php file for our navigation where we have written our navigation code and then we just added that link in other pages so that we don't need to write this navigation code for uh, the other pages and this navigation is actually linked through this link by all the pages where this link is added or included that's why we if we change anything in our navigation then the change will be shown in all other pages this is very advantageous for us okay now now let's go to the website you know how to go there write localhost then press the folders and it will take you to the index page or you can click on the home then you can see the direction and we all the pages have the same navigation here because we added the link in login and registration page now let's create our database for that write localhost don't forget to open your XAMPP software and start Apache and MySQL and then write localhost and then php myadmin then press enter you don't need internet i have said this in previous video too and then create database then give a name for the database i'm using library and then press create this is actually very simple i don't think you will have any problem this is really easy you see the library is included in all those database list and now create table we need to create a table for student registration we are first working for student registration so we will name it as student and we need to give the number of column that we will use here inside the registration there is a form named registration and in this form how many field we have created we need to see that you see the name count them all we have six field here so we will need to create six column in our database table and the table name is student let's make it six and you can actually add many more thing if you want to add some more columns like we have you created first name last name username password role email and you can add some other things too like section name and from which class or year they are let's copy this and paste it here and make another input and this time everything will be same every class every design will be styling will be same just we need to change the name here and this name will be let's say phone we will use the phone number here so that librarian can contact this person through this phone number or they can send message to if you want to add that feature and now we need to add seven column in our database sorry in our table that is inside the database called library so here give the name as same as you have actually written in the code like you need to actually you can copy them too or you can just write it exactly like them if you have written it in small letter you need to write it in small letter everything should have to be same that will be easier for you when you start coding so we will keep the name same as we have written there and then all this will be character type and give a length you can give 100 over 200 then write the other names too and make sure they are written in properly 
so it will be easier for us when we start coding and okay let's change it to contact and then remember you need to keep it exactly like the name not the placeholder because placeholder was the placeholder was uh, the name that we want to show inside the box when someone will want to insert and in or register their name and everything for them to show that what they need to write in which folder that is why we actually wrote that placeholder thing okay and now you can see that we have created our seven column but there is no input as nobody has registered yet and now we will connect this database to our website our database name is library there is one table called student and okay so okay for now there is another thing that you need to do here inside the form there is a thing called method you can see right there inside the method inside double quotation write post because we will be posting the information that we will get from the user to our database to our table so the method will be post and now create another new file and save this inside the folder see the direction don't save it in anywhere else you need to save everything here so that everything is connected and we can go there from our from the local host and then save it as connection.php and now we will write the code here we are writing the code to connect our website to the database so we will just need to write php code for this so opening tag and closing tag for php and inside them we need to create a variable and you know that in php if we want to create a variable we need to use dollar sign so dollar sign and the variable name is dollar sign db equal to we need to write another function here mysqli underscore connect write it exactly like them and then we need to give input for input inside this function or for parameters inside this function and they will be separated by commas and the input will be in double quotation and the first one will be the server name this will be localhost by default then the username this will be root by default and if you actually change it inside the jam software then we need to change this otherwise everything will be like this and then password that will be blank and after that the fourth one this will be our database name we have saved our database as library you see you need to write the letter correctly if you write it wrong then this will not connect to the database so okay then I'm just showing it inside a comment here and in PHP you can write comment by double slashing and if you want to write a big comment like if the comment actually surpass one line then you need to write it like this start with a backslash and then asterisk then inside them you need to write the comment then close it with an asterisk flash and then backslash so what we have written inside the parameters the server name first and then after the server name we have written root you can see that that is our username and we are using the default one if you change this thing these names and the usernames password and server name you need to change them accordingly like you have changed okay and then after the password the last one will be about database name
ओके सो एक्चुअली वी ओनली नीड दिस लाइन टू कनेक्ट टू आवर वेबसाइट एंड डेटा बेस बट वी एक्चुअली वॉन्ट टू सी दैट हाउ इट इज वर्किंग सो वी विल एड सम कंडीशन हेयर एंड गिव सम आउटपुट इफ देन एक्सप्लेमेटरी साइन एंड देन द वेरिएबल वी हैव क्रिएटेड दैट मीन्स इफ द डेटा बेस इज नॉट कनेक्टेड प्रोपरली और द वेरिएबल दैट इज दैट वी हैव क्रिएटेड देयर वी हैव एक्चुअली कनेक्टेड द डेटा बेज एंड वेबसाइट इफ दिस इज नॉट कनेक्टेड प्रोपरली दैन दिस विल गिव अस अ मैसेज एंड वी विल राइट इट इन साइड हेयर लाइक दिस डाई दैन इन साइड द फर्स्ट ब्रैकेट वी विल राइट इन साइड डबल कोटेशन कनेक्शन फेल एंड देन कोलम इन स्पेस एंड आफ्टर द मैसेज वी वॉन्ट टू शो द रियल मैसेज from by calling a function and for this we need to give a dot and then after space we will write mysql i then connect and then underscore then error and then parenthesis or first bracket you see whenever we are writing a function name it is actually changing the color and you need to write it exactly like this the function name you cannot change it and if it is if there is no error then it will just show a message and you know for writing output in php we need to write echo and then inside the double quotation we can write the message that we want to show so if there is no error and the connection is all right then it will show this message connected successfully and don't forget to give the semicolon after each line or after each expression and then okay so we will link this to our website now what we need to do is include this file here in every pages that where we will use this connection so inside the registration we will include this connection.php file so the process is same inside the double quotation and write the name of the file don't write the name in the wrong way you need to write it exactly like you have saved the file name and then give a semicolon and save this now let's go back to our website now we'll go to our sign up page our registration page here you see let me zoom in a bit here you can see connected successfully that means our website and our database is connected and if it is it was not connected properly now let us change the name a bit so you can see in our connection.php page if we change our database name let's say we will delete the l but our database name was library so we just wrote it in a wrong way now if we refresh this you see there is warning here and unknown database that means this database is not present there and here connection failed the message that we have written the message that we actually wrote inside this you can see and then we have called a function and this function is actually giving us the message that what is our error so that's how we are actually showing it and if we it clear written it clear exactly like the name we have saved in our database then you see connected successfully so we don't need actually all this message we are just seeing it how this works so you can delete it we just need this one line where we have created our variable dollar sign db and inside them we have actually connected our database and our website and this is comment you can delete it or you can keep it it does not affect the code so this line is the main line 
and that's how you need to connect your database and website and now you see we have deleted our messages so this is just showing our registration page